In this lecture, we explore the female reproductive system from structure to function. We move from external and internal genitalia to the menstrual cycle, fertilization, implantation, and hormonal control through the HPO axis. Each concept is linked clinically, hormonally, and physiologically for a complete understanding. Here's the complete concept map from this video lecture. It covers the main parts of the female reproductive system, including external genitalia, internal genitalia, the menstrual cycle, fertilization, implantation, and endocrine regulation, the HPO axis. Part 1 of the external genitalia, mons pubis. The mons pubis is an estrogen-sensitive adipose pad located over the pubic symphysis. It provides mechanical cushioning and protection during locomotion and sexual activity. Fat deposition increases at puberty and declines after menopause, reflecting systemic estrogen levels. Clinically, loss of mong's fat may be observed in hypoestrogenic states, eating disorders, or chronic illness. Part 2 of the external genitalia. Labia majora. The labia majora are thick, hair-bearing skin folds containing sweat and sebaceous glands. They shield the vestibule and deeper vulvar structures. Pigmentation. Thickness and size vary widely among individuals and represent normal anatomical diversity. Estrogen maintains tissue elasticity. Postmenopausal atrophy increases susceptibility to irritation and infection. Part 3 of the external genitalia, labia minora. The labia minora are hairless, highly vascular folds rich in sensory nerve endings. They protect the urethral and vaginal openings and participate in sexual arousal. During arousal, venous engorgement causes swelling analogous to erectile tissue. Vestibulodynia is a clinically significant condition causing dyspareunia, painful intercourse, despite normal anatomy, probably due to pathogens, genetic, and traumatic causes. Part 4 of the external genitalia, the clitoris. Only the clitoral glands is externally visible. Internally, the clitoris consists of the body, paired crura, and vestibular bulbs. It is the primary organ of sexual sensation and arousal. The clitoris contains more than 8,000 sensory nerve endings, exceeding any other human organ, and its sole known function is pleasure. Part 5 of the external genitalia, vestibule. The vestibule is the area between the labia minora. It contains the vaginal opening, urethral opening, and hymen, which varies in shape. It allows passage of urine, menstrual blood, intercourse, and childbirth. Gland 3, the Bartholin glands. Bartholin glands are paired accessory glands of the external female genitalia, located on either side of the vaginal opening. They secrete mucus that lubricates the vaginal opening during sexual arousal. These glands remain mostly inactive until puberty and become functional only under hormonal influence. The hymen is a thin membranous part of the external female genitalia at the vaginal opening. It is made of elastic connective tissue and has no essential biological function. It can stretch or tear due to exercise, tampon use, medical exams, or other physical activities, not just intercourse. Internal genitalia. The internal genitalia are the reproductive organs located inside the body, responsible for producing sex cells or gametes, hormones, and facilitating reproduction. In females, these include the ovaries, fallopian tubes, and uterus. First part of internal genitalia, the vagina. The vagina is a fibromuscular canal lined by stratified squamous epithelium, serving as the organ of copulation, menstrual flow, and childbirth. Normal vaginal pH ranges from 3.8 to 4.5, maintained by lactobacillus species that metabolize glycogen into lactic acid. Vaginal tissue can stretch up to 200% during childbirth under normal physiological conditions. Estrogen deficiency reduces glycogen content, elevates pH, and predisposes to infection. Part 2 of internal genitalia, the cervix. The cervix is the lower, cylindrical part of the uterus that connects it to the vagina and acts as a dynamic gatekeeper with a narrow canal. It consists of the ectocervix, outer part, endocervix, inner canal, internal opening or os, and external os or opening. Estrogen produces thin, watery, sperm-permissive mucus, while progesterone induces thick, protective mucus. The ectocervix and endocervix meet at the squamocolumnar junction, transformation zone, 
containing squamous cells, flat cells, and glandular cells, mucus secreting cells, where most cervical abnormalities and cancers arise. Part 3 of Internal Genitalia, the Uterus. The uterus is a muscular, inverted pear-shaped organ composed of an inner hormone-responsive endometrium, a thick smooth muscle myometrium, and an outer protective perimetrium. The non-pregnant uterus measures about 7 to 8 centimeters in length. During pregnancy, it enlarges greatly to accommodate volumes exceeding 5 liters. Uterine mass increases nearly 20-fold during gestation and undergoes postpartum involution. Endometriosis affects approximately 10% of women and is a major cause of infertility. Part 4 of Internal Genitalia, the Fallopian Tubes The Fallopian Tubes, oviducts or uterine tubes, are a pair of long, narrow ducts that transport sperm to the egg, provide the site for fertilization, and carry the egg to the uterus. Each fallopian tube is about 12 centimeters long and has four main regions. The infundibulum with fimbria that capture the ovum, the ampulla where fertilization usually occurs, the isthmus which is narrow, and the interstitial intramural part that passes through the uterine wall to open into the uterine cavity. The lining of fallopian tube contains ciliated cells, cilia, and secretory cells, with muscular layers that produce peristaltic movements to aid transport. Fallopian tube secretions contain glucose, bicarbonate, lactic acid, ions, and proteins, which support sperm survival, fertilization, and early embryo development. Damage or blockage of the tubes due to pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis or congenital defects can impair fertility. Or cause ectopic pregnancy. Damage to fallopian tube cilia blocks ovum transport, raising ectopic pregnancy risk, usually in the ampulla. This life-threatening condition occurs when a fertilized egg implants outside the uterus, often leading to tubal rupture and hemorrhage. Part 5 of Internal Genitalia The Ovaries The ovaries are almond-shaped gonads responsible for eugenesis and hormone secretion. Approximately 6 to 7 million oocytes are present at mid-gestation, declining to 1 to 2 million at birth, and 300,000 to 400,000 at puberty. Only 400 to 500 oocytes ovulate during a lifetime. Female fertility declines primarily due to reduced oocyte quality rather than cessation of cycles. The menstrual cycle is a recurring hormonal process that prepares the female body for pregnancy typically averaging 28 days, with normal variation between 21 and 40 days. It is regulated by follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, estrogen, and progesterone and continues from puberty until menopause. The menstrual cycle has three major steps, the follicular or proliferative phase, ovulation, and the luteal or secretory phase. First phase, follicular or proliferative phase, the follicular phase begins with menstruation, the endometrium sheds. Follicles mature under FSH influence, estrogen rises, and the uterine lining thickens for potential implantation. Primary oocytes can remain arrested and prophesy for decades before ovulation. Second phase ovulation. Ovulation occurs mid-cycle due to the LH surge triggered by high sustained estrogen, releasing a mature oocyte into the fallopian tube. This precise timing is crucial for successful fertilization. The LH surge switches hypothalamic pituitary feedback from negative to positive, a rare physiological inversion. Third phase. Luteal or secretory phase. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone, preparing the endometrium for implantation. If fertilization does not occur, progesterone falls, triggering menstruation and restarting the cycle. The endometrium is receptive only during a narrow implantation window of 6 to 7 days. Fertilization. Fertilization usually occurs in the ampulla of the fallopian tube when sperm meets the oocyte. This single-cell zygote begins rapid division into small cells called blastomeres as it moves toward the uterus. Only one sperm out of millions successfully fertilizes the egg, highlighting extreme biological precision. Implantation is the process by which the blastocyst embeds into the endometrium to establish pregnancy. It occurs about six to seven days after fertilization when the blastocyst, 
Made of roughly 200 to 300 blastomeres and containing a fluid-filled blastocele, attaches to the uterine lining. Proper hormonal timing is essential. If mistimed, implantation fails despite a healthy embryo and the cycle restarts. The hypothalamic pituitary ovarian HPO axis regulates female reproduction. Pulsatile GnRH from the hypothalamus drives FSH and LH release from the pituitary, controlling follicle growth and ovulation. Estrogen and progesterone provide feedback to fine-tune this rhythm. Estrogen is remarkable. It not only supports reproduction, but also influences mood, memory, bone density, cholesterol balance, and immune function. Even stress, extreme exercise, or malnutrition can disrupt GnRH pulses, halting ovulation as a survival safeguard. Thank you for watching. If this lecture helped you, please like, comment, and share. Stay connected for more informative biology and medical lectures.